Hello and welcome to another episode of Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. I've been carrying on, getting on with uh, what are the things I was talking about in the last episode, or at least some of the things I was talking about in the last episode. So I've been building up my um, defensive wall around the very edge of the, edge of the, um, the factory area. So I talked in the last one about this bit that I got set up, and I've put a radar in here now so I can see it. And as you can see, we've got a string of turrets with occasional flamethrower turrets stuck in between them, just to give it a bit of extra, um, a bit of extra oomph. And I've put some extra bullet turrets in on, along here because I was worried that there were going to be a lot of attacks coming from this direction that wasn't, it wasn't very well defended against, which is why there's also some dragon teeth over here. And because I've got the bots placing everything down, it's really easy to put down the dragon teeth. So I thought I might as well. It gives that bit of extra. Um, makes spreads the biters out and slows them down a bit as they attack, uh, which is even better when you've got flame turrets in there. Got the same here, although apparently there's one missing in there. Let's put that, let's add that one in, and then a long piece of the same sort of thing all the way across here. And this is one of the longer gaps that I was a bit unsure about, and I thought, well, I need to I need to have coverage everywhere, so I've uh, I need to have a full wall of some sort all the way around the base. So I've had to make some of these slightly longer ones down here this one's also rather long and one of the things I've done here is I put in two stations for building this and now they're, they're sharing as you can see here these, this, this block here is the power generation so we've got the solar panels and accumulators for that generating the power there and it's feeding it up along these pylons all the way around round to the top as well and the reason I've got two stations in here is because I wanted to split off the two RoboPort networks if I turn that on you can see that they're not actually joined here um, the orange part isn't joined which means the bots won't go between them and that means the bots from this side won't try and repair over here and vice versa and the reason I needed to do that is there's a very real risk of bots going fl trying to fly from down here up to over here if there's damage on both corners and if they do that then they fly across this exposed area in the middle and there's a fairly high chance of them getting shot down by spitters so what I've done here is uh, split the two, split it up into two separate um, RoboPort areas so the robots won't fly back and forth won't fly between them and I've got a, and I've got a supply of all the building materials on this side I haven't got the ammunition on this side just the build just the building and repair materials and so on this um, combinator I've, re I've uh, removed the oil and the fuel and stuff that then continues down here there's a short one across here that's 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 a lovely short one um, and I think I've managed to get it extended a bit beyond where the land goes to so hopefully that means that wherever that when the biters come in around this corner from this nest as they probably will eventually they'll at least be running into a decent wall of turrets rather than a very rather than a, a corner so if possible it's always better to have the um, the turrets slightly wider than the bottleneck that they're protecting I've done the same thing here with them growing going off into this onto this promontory and then having them protecting this this whole area all the way across here this is another big wide one with two separate sections in it what I've done here is I've gone in and I've, I've built up all of the the turret defenses um, why does that one not have fuel not have ammo Okay, there's something that's gone a bit wrong there. Um, that shouldn't be there. There should be a flame turret in there. I obviously messed up with my blueprint somehow along the, along the way. Uh, never mind. It's not. It's not. Not too serious. Maybe I'll fix that if I find myself over there. Um, so again, I've got one station here, and the way these stations work is they're hooked up to a uh, combinator, which again has the, the same sort of thing as I was doing with the, with the uh, with the signals coming from the other planets, where I've got large or appropriate negative numbers of all of the things I want to have in the in the uh, facility set on the combinator there and then I've linked the all the boxes together that hold stuff then link that to the station and the station is set to enable or disable if anything is less than zero so if any of these are less than zero as currently walls are walls are at minus 20 so the station is turned on at the moment that's why we've got these yellow lights on top of it and it's going to summon a train so the next is that the first one? Yes, that's the first one that's actually turned on at the moment. As you can see, so the, the text for this one is red because the station has turned itself off. Because over here we've got more than zero of everything. The wood's a bit low, but it's more than zero still, so that's okay. Which means there must be 50, 56 wood in the, in the whole system. So that should be working fine. And the reason this is demanding walls all the time, and it's it's low on walls, is because I'm getting the bots to, do, to build all of this up because I got a bit I got lazy and bored of waiting for my own personal robots to do it. So I um, just left the um, the out, outpost bots doing it, which is a very very slow process. But given how well the walls are defended with just the turrets and the flame turrets, I don't feel it actually matters. It's something to sort of happen over time. Over here isn't the current one I'm in the process of building at the moment. As you can see, exactly the same thing as before. I've built all the way along as far as here uh, with the turrets and things. 
the walls aren't done yet, but that's because the um, the station here is again waiting waiting for the walls to be delivered, which is quite a long way down the queue because it works. The train works out where the nearest uh, available outpost station is, and it does that by according to the distance it is along the rail lines from from wherever it is at the, where, where it starts, which is up in the main base, of course. So obviously it gets to this one first, then to this one, then to this one. But gradually, it'll it'll get there eventually. It's, it's it's going to be a long, slow process, but I'm not in any great hurry. So one of the things you might have noticed is that I haven't really cleared out inside this area yet, uh, because that's quite a long and long process and a bit of a headache, and it takes for e forever. Um, just because there's there's so many nests in there, and my weapons aren't. It's not it's not quite at the point where I can just run through through a biter nest with personal lasers flashing and just and zap everything on the way through. So. It's a bit of a long process, but that's why I've put this in here, um, this extra bit going up here and round the top here. That means I can bring the artillery train down and park it in here and then shell all of these nests in this sort of area with the artillery train uh, and that'll wipe them out. Admittedly, I, do I am going to need a lot more ammunition here first because half these turrets aren't loaded, but then these will hopefully be enough to pre pre protect the um, the artillery train from the hordes of biters that come flooding in and I'll try and be on hand as well to do any repairing that's necessary so ooh, that's currently full but that's probably going to empty again fairly quickly as these as these walls get built up although actually looking at that that one's nearly finished so let's try and find the try and find the um, the ammo train that's filling all of these up no, I can't see it. Let's, let's, let's do it the proper way. So select a station, trains that use it. Okay, so it's just stopped there, which is where it picks up all of the building materials. Its next stop is down here, where it picks up the green ammunition. Load, loads up, make sure it's got enough ammunition for uh, in order to restock whatever um, outpost it gets to. That one already did have enough ammunition, it turns out, because you can see the, uh, the inactivity bar was going straight up there without, without any, any messing around. So let's tell it to go here first. And that tells it to go here and then work out where the nearest outpost station is, which will obviously be this one. So it'll get to here, whip round the corner, and then unload here, and I'll have all the supply. And then it'll at least have some of the supplies I need down there. Now I think I've... Yes, I've put... Where have all the rest of the bots gone? I put 19 in there, because that was what I had. Oh. My, my construction robots keep disappearing. I think they must... I don't know... Oh, actually, no, no, no tell a lie. They're, oh, yes, of course, they've got spread out amongst the construction, about uh, amongst the um, robo ports. That's that's all right then. <laughs> they've not got lost. I did have a problem at one point where, because there wasn't enough power, the robots just flew back to wherever the nearest powered robo port was. In, in this case, they probably try and fly back across here and go over all these nests and get blown up. But that hasn't happened because I built up the, um, the power infrastructure first, and there's more than enough power here. It, it, It'll keep everything running very happily. So here we go. Train's pulled in. It's unloading the things that are needed. So that's walls and ammunition and wood. And the train will stay here until it has five seconds of inactivity. And while it's unloading like this, it's not going to have any inactivity because the um, the inserters are going flat out. But once the chests get basically full, you can see this is starting to, starting to grow. But then something gets pulled out of one of these chests and it has to start again. So it's going to wait until... Either it runs out of the supplies it's unloading, or these chests get to the point where they've got, where they're full, where they're as full as I'm going to let them get. Uh, so it's gonna, yeah, it'll tick over for a little while like this, and um, and unload all of the ammunition onto the onto the um, onto the belts here. One thing I've noticed is that the um, the armor piercing, at, sorry, the no, the uranium ammunition actually glows in the dark, which is kind of cool. <laughs> it didn't used to do that. That's obviously one part of the new uh, lighting stuff, and you can see on the. Um, the train signals as well, they're glowing as well. Now if I go out of map mode it stops doing it, but that's because I've got um, my night vision goggles on. Take those off. Yeah, you can see everything everything glowing prettily in the dark. <laughs> Including the pilot lights on the flame turrets as well. That's quite nice. Uh, let's put that back in there. It's not doesn't look quite as nice because it's still got that sort of green here green haze from the um, from the night vision, but still I, it, uh, it helps me see in the dark, so it's kind of worthwhile. Maybe this will be. Hopefully, this will be enough ammunition to get all of the turrets loaded. Um, I can't tell what's going on down there. It's in the. It's, it's out of radar range. It's these ones across the top here that I'm most worried about because when I start shelling, I'm going to end up destroying that base first and that one, and that, and then get get all of these ones up. Hopefully, these ones are all the way up here as well. Um, 
that. Let's check. No, no, I can't. I can. There we go. Yes. Yeah, so there's there's actually an artillery turret on the back of the uh, supply train, although it's not loaded at the moment. So that shows the area that I'll be able to um, attack manually, and that shows the area that'll get attacked automatically. So it's that base, that base, and that base. And these are all going to be protected now by my turret walls. Uh, the walls are getting gradually built up, but that's a slow process. But it'll, it'll get there eventually. Okay, so I'm going to um, uh, fast forward a little bit now and and uh, get get all of my until I've got this all all set up a bit more and a bit more ready, and I've got things re ready to defend against a, a biter horde essentially. Okay, so now I've um, built up the defences a little bit more. I've put I've built this wall a little bit by bringing some um, stone walls down manually and I built up a wall along the edge of here as well so it's a little bit more a little bit more defended and I've summoned this train once more to actually bring all of the stuff down and one of the things you might have noticed is that, is that I've started using wood instead of coal to power my burner inserters for all the turrets and that's because I've got loads and loads of wood and I don't really have any good uses for it I think there might be a way to turn it into green circuits but I've got that being done with stone bricks and I'm not going to change now so it's um, it's essentially useless so I've just got it being piped in to power all of these inserters and it's, it's a way to just you know get through some of it and it's just as flammable as coal it, it doesn't burn for quite as long so it's not technically quite as good but it is more than good enough so that's absolutely fine so now that's all set up the next thing to do is bring the artillery train down and um, have some fun uh, where is it oh, way down here <laughs> so let's park the artillery train there and we'll say park there until empty that's that one, isn't it? It. okay it should now be on its way down yes there here it comes now, when it pulls in, it's going to start automatically firing uh, at its sort of short range, which will get, as I said, will take out this bay, this nest, this nest, and this nest, and that that will, of course, immediately start um, attack. So you'll get to see get to see the um, the flamethrowers in action, and when they're again, and the flamethrowers are particularly good against sort of massed ranks of biters. They're really quite effective because they just they they've got splash damage rather than just being um, rather than just being like bullet weapons. And they're all being powered. I, I, I may have mentioned this before. I can't remember. So each of these, each of these outpost stations, you can't really see it in that one because of all the trees, or that one because it doesn't have one. Most of these output stations, here we go, have a, um, a pump unloading uh, light oil like that, and it's then carried by pipe down and sort of snaked into the into the turrets. And we've then got these underground pipes like this linking them all together. So I think my artillery train, yes, here it is, ready to start firing. I'm impressed by the level of detail in this. When the artillery cannons fire, you can see the empty shells, the empty case from the artillery shells popping out, flying out the side of them. Anyway, here comes that attack as, uh, as, as predicted. Because when you when you shell their nests, it, it makes them unhappy for some reason. So they then tend to uh, come rushing over in a big sweeping attack like this. Uh, except when they get confused by a forest and it sort of. I'm surprised they haven't started. Oh, they have started eating the trees. Oh no, it's just some damaged biters from the artillery shells. Here we go. So yeah, the um, the way all this works is we have the um, the flame turrets will will do some um, initial damage to anything that's running in, and then we've got the bots in this area will automatically fly out with repair packs and and spare pieces for anything that needs repairing. And so in theory, it should all keep topped up. As there's been been an attack over here as well. This is going to be an impressive one. So there we go. The um, flame turrets attack anything that's a bit further away. And because they because of the um, the flight time on the on the fire there like that it takes a little while for it to actually get to the um, to the biters in question so it's um, it's not great for sort of single individual attacks but when there's a sort of a reasonably big one it's far more effective because it gets the sort of the second row which is, means it takes out the spitters which are the ones that do all the damage and that gets around the problem I was having earlier and we can see the bite the uh, bots are flying out to repair all this stuff as well because. Um, it's it this this bit is slightly funny as whether well, they're flying all over the place because this is only temporary, but it um, it just shows that it's all working. Are they gonna? Oh well, they can just stay there enjoying that forest. As far as I'm concerned, I don't mind. So what I need to do now is use the uh, the manual remote and just get rid of all of these nests that are stopping me expanding my wall across. There's well, not so much stopping me expanding the wall, but the, it was the one here was was stopping me expanding. Uh, this one is just behind the behind my front lines and therefore shouldn't be there. So I can use the uh, the artillery remote to tell it exactly what to attack. 
it's a slightly um, long drawn out process, especially when there's enormous numbers of, of um, biters and biter nests and spawners and things. But it does get let me get rid of them from a from a safe distance. The main disadvantage of using the artillery over nukes is that you then get the floods of biters coming in to attack your defences like that. Why are they punching through? Okay, they're not supposed to be able to... I mean, these defences are supposed to be biter-proof. And so that sort of flood shouldn't have been able to penetrate and, and destroy these turrets. Apparently my defences aren't quite as good as I was hoping. Uh, or maybe it's because there's a big gaps in the dragon's teeth here. I don't know. We'll uh, have to see. I'm fairly sure that the um, stone walls are fireproof, so that should mean... Are those going to get replaced? They should. There's some turrets in a the box there. Um, the stone walls, I believe, are fireproof, so it shouldn't matter that they're getting splashed with the... Um... Oh dear, yeah. This, this is the sort of external corner I was talking about in the last episode that's difficult to defend, because you can't get as many turrets into, it, into, the, into the same sort of focus area as you can normally. So I'm going to nip up there and sort that out manually. There we go, let's get that repaired. Make sure everything keeps working. Oh, here comes another big attack. I hope we're not getting any splash damage from this flame turret. I don't think we are. I think that's okay. Right. Next. Um, as you can see, that's cleared this air whole area out really effectively. Uh, there's a few bits and pieces that I've missed because I wasn't clearly wasn't counting properly when I was or keeping track properly. Is that another attack? Yes, it is. Seems pretty harmless. Um, yeah, so this is a nice, long-range, easy way to get to get rid of the biters. Now, the problem with this is it does require a fair amount of infrastructure. You have to have railway lines set up to allow the artillery train to come in. I mean, there is a a, um, a, a non-train artillery as well, but that's even harder to get into place because you don't have an artillery to place it with. So <laughs> that's not, um, not, not really a help. It's good for static defences if you ever need any in that sort of way, but I, I don't think I really do. Uh, because I suppose actually there's a few places where it could be useful, but my, my, my plan is once I've got all this established, I'm going to have some ammunition for this artillery cannon here on the back of the on the back of the resupply train. And so that'll just push the biters back every so often when it, whenever it goes out to do a resupply mission. And it'll only get and it means it'll only it'll only turn up in places where there's some action happening and therefore it's needed. Which is so it should should be a bit more efficient. Here's another attack coming in. Just you can just see it through the fog of war. Right, that's pretty much I mean it's it's all of the biters that are inside the attack in, inside the attack circle that are also inside the area that I'm trying to claim. So I think for now that'll do. I'm not going to bother trying to take out all of these bites as well, as well because that just seems... Um, it, it's, it seems a bit... Um, un, it's unnecessary and it's a waste, waste of ammunition and, and just and risk of damage to my, uh, my defences as well. So we'll call that basically done now. And that means that all of these, these ones out here I'm going to have to do in some sort of different way. Uh, my next area that I want to build a wall across is going to be here, this corner. Um, I'm not quite sure exactly how I'm going to do it yet. Um, yeah, because there isn't a convenient... Maybe maybe sort of across there and then a little bit down like that, just to make sure. Uh, we'll we'll have, to, have to see what sort of fits in. So that means a lot of these are, are going to be in areas that aren't really defended, so I'm not going to be able to use the artillery trick that I've been doing now. So what I'm probably going to do is make some more um, atomic bombs and then fly out there with the um, with the backpack with uh, on with the jetpack and just and shell them. I did do a little bit of that over here, as you can tell by these craters that have been left behind, these big sort of singe marks. Uh, so I, I used a few of those, a few of them over here, but I reckon I can go back in now and now and make some more. And uh, then we should be ready to um, carry on attacking. Okay, so that's um, that's how my defences are going at the moment. I'm, um, it's a step up from what I was doing before for in, in, in the two ways, as, as I've been describing. One is that they're, they're better defences because they've got all the dragon's teeth, making them a bit more defended, and they've got these and they've got the flamethrower turrets as well. And you've seen how devastating those can be. So that makes them a lot more powerful. And the other thing is that I'm, I'm only tr I'm trying now to just do the, sm the shortest um, bottlenecks I can. And yeah, okay, that's not always possible. It's not always possible to find a really good bottleneck. Some of these are a bit longer than I would ideally have wanted, particularly this one. And actually this one, but a lot of them are longer than I would ideally like. Uh, this one is perfect. This one's going to be even even better. 
um, but it's not always possible to do that. And I suppose the third thing I'm doing differently is that I'm bringing, I've gone back to now having outposts that have the stuff coming in by train. So originally I start off doing that with things like this, this one where I'd have a train come in, it would build up the entire mine and then clear off again and it would just be in the middle of no man's land. I then went to step, uh, the, the next step up from that that was a bit better was having these long walls with the endless ammunition belts going to them and just feeding them and keeping, keeping them all, all supplied. And then that got, to be honest, it got a bit ridiculous because I'm trying to claim such a big area now and the sheer amount of ammunition and resources that's tied up in this belt and in all these massive long turret walls as well it's, it's just a bit ridiculous uh, so now I've gone to the, the next step up is to have this sort of thing where I've just got the little outposts with a with a bit of wall coming out from them and I can add to them fairly easily just by flying down here to find the end of it let's take a bit of damage so we can repair that while we're here now in the end once it's all finished this will all be completely automated but it's not quite at that point yet but I can then come in here with one of my um, things I've cop things I've previously copied. There we go. This is my blueprint for making setting up a uh, big chunk of this sort of wall. And I can just run along here like this. Oh, there's another nest there. That's um, that's new. That was not there um, before because it wasn't on the map. Okay, I'm going to have to deal with that. So this is the the problem with um, because I'm playing in normal mode and not um, and not rail world mode, the biters don't have the decency to um, stay where I leave them. <laughs> they ha they tend to expand quite a lot. Uh, come on, stop stop putting these down for a minute. Okay, so if I pick up my bots, if I fly over here so I can recon the ooh, that biter nest. Hopefully it's all on the map now. Yes, it is. Good. I hope they're not going to attack all of my unarmed turrets down there. The other pro slight problem I've got here is that my belts are the wrong way round on the blueprint, so I need to do that to uh, turn them around again. Yeah, they're attacking the turrets. Oh, don't do that. Okay, there we go. Some of the turrets are armed, armed and ready now, so they can uh, they can defend actually defend themselves. Oh, but some of them aren't. Stop it! Stop attacking my stuff. There we go. I'll teach them a lesson. So the next thing to do is to take out this biter nest because the artillery is still there conveniently. That's probably enough. Let's put one there as well just for luck. Now it does occur to me that I'm directly in the um, in the line that the biters are going to run down when they realise they're getting shelled, um, which isn't ideal. Oh no, they're they're, they're going up. That's all right. Is that that one taken out? Yes, it is. No, they are coming to get me. Actually, this might bring them down close enough to these turrets so they can, yeah, be taken out by these. That'll do. It's cost me a few turrets, but to be honest, at this stage of the game, turrets are basically ammunition as far as I'm concerned. They're something that gets expended during warfare. Yeah, I'll try to save them a little bit, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter if a few of them get blown up. It's the old Lord Farquhar thing, isn't it? Some of you may die, but that's a sacrifice I'm prepared to make. That's... Uh, go in and replace all the stuff that I picked up to stop getting blown up. There we go. And then we just need one more of these going up to the, up to the sea over here. And we've now got a complete wall going all the way across. Um, at least, in theory, we've got a complete wall going. Oh no, I do, I do have enough belts. It's just the bots are busy with other stuff. I have run out of turrets though. Never mind. The... Um, the bots can do that from these from the resupply system. So the other th the other part of these defences is that I have these um, robo ports all the way along here, meaning this entire area is covered by construction robots, and that's why they come in and rebuild everything when anything gets damaged, because it's all robo ported up. And so that's that keeps it all. That means it's essentially completely hands off. The robots will come out and repair any damage that's done by the biters. If they start to run out of supplies, whether that's of um, repair kits or turrets because turrets get blown up, or walls because the walls get damaged, or even the um, the, the burner inserters because they they've got splashed by um, spitter attacks, they can get it. All, they can get more supplies from here. When any of these run low, the train will bring out more to them, and the train is getting automatically loaded up here from my factory. And we've got these requester chests here that are pulling in large, sufficient quantities of each of the resources to, in order to keep the train full. So this whole system 
should now be completely hands off and automated and shouldn't need any sort of interaction from him. Blimey, this factory's getting big. I've claimed a huge area down here trying to just trying to trying to link the lakes up. That's amazing. Um, so yeah, as you can see, this is going pretty well. Um, I've not touched stuff happening on other planets. I have noticed that um, Myokin is destined to get the next coronal mass ejection, which is a bit scary, but that's 12 and a half hours off. Um, I think I'm probably just going to have to tank it and then go up and repair whatever damage has been done because I don't have... I mean, I, I suppose I, I could go up there with an umbrella defense and a rocket full of um, uh, accumulators, but... Uh, <clears throat> I guess I will at some point. <laughs> okay, so that's um, that's been Lawrence Defense's factory. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time when I'll go out and play with some nukes, I think. <laughs> I'll see you then for that.